because we'll have to do, we'll have to see if she can play the Mass of Christ the Savior down there. Oh. Two half mm -hmm. If not, I'll just do it to play. Yeah, you can. Our uh, father is going to have us do a memory of So we'll just do a year of it. Looks like he's doing 10 32. I'll have to tell Francesca. Yeah. So I can see what they're doing. That's good. We, Ryan, we can just go straight through. Is that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah, but I don't know if you get stabbed.
So Francesca, I'm sorry. to give you this.
to your B. B? Yeah. Awesome. It's actually up today. So that oh, yeah. helps. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm Paulette Crook, and on behalf of the Finance Council, I'd like to share a short but long overdue update. And we'll start with some very good news. This week, we received a letter from the diocese with our fiscal year and results. We ended the fiscal year with a very small deficit, which will not be carried over into this year. To quote, to quote the diocese, we appreciate the efforts of your committed team to close the gap and the generosity from many benefactors of the UB Newman Center for jumping in at a critical time. We want to thank the more than 60 families who contributed more than $37,000. This helps to prove that UBNC can cover the cost of our operations. More importantly, we've proven to ourselves that faced with a challenge, we can do what Newman always does, band together, help each other, and solve the problem. Going forward, We've created a balanced budget for the 24-25 fiscal year, but we will need your continued generosity to ensure that we continue to pay for the important ministries of our whole parish family and the Newman Center. Again, and as always, thank you for everything you do. Our opening song can be found in your hymnal number 837, Gather Your People. Please stand. 837 in your hymnal. Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With your welcome, my brothers and sisters, to this celebration of the Eucharist. Um, if we haven't met yet, my name is Father Dan Serbicki. I'm the relatively new pastor here. I formally started on August 16th and then immediately got COVID. So i <laughs> kind of catching up with uh, everything that is going on. Um, if you think you've seen me recently, I was previously pastor at what was called Family 13 in, um, at St. John's in Alden and um, eight different churches in Genesee and Wyoming counties. So um, this is simpler, actually, coming here, uh, a couple less locations to worry about. But um, good to be with all of you and especially glad to be involved with campus ministry. As we begin, let's pause for a moment to examine our hearts and we'll ask the Lord for his mercy. You have, sent, uh, you have come to, to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. grace, O Lord, we pray at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand and before her silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. saw evil. 
Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, Indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He replied and said to him, teacher, all these, these I have observed from my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said to him, you are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said amongst themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, There is no one who has given up house, brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or lands, for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 
There is a moment in the life of um, a lot of children where their parents try to get them into sports. That didn't work on me. Um, maybe it worked on you. Um, if you, if you, you get into sports, that's great. Um, but I remember my dad trying to, to give me these, these pieces of wisdom that would make me good at sports. And um, you know, one of those is, you know, keep your eye on the ball. Uh, it was a, one that he'd always tell me. I don't know if that really helped me at all, but um, you know, keep your eye on the ball. I'll be tossing the ball back and forth in the yard. It was kind of helpful. And um, it's, it's an image, I think, that is, is helpful here. Um, as we look at this young man, I don't want to go right away into some of the, uh, the, the wealth and things like that. We'll get there. Um, but let's just start out by thinking, what is this guy keeping his eyes on? What is he focused on? Is it his neighbor? Is it God? Is it his parents? And no. I mean, his question is, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He's worried, what's, what's good for me? And there's a kind of a split in this passage as we're talking about eternal life and the kingdom as to whether we're talking about heaven or, or kind of the church down here. We can, we can talk about that in a bit too. Um, but whether this guy's talking about, you know, just uh, getting to heaven or whether he's talking about just kind of living a comfortable life down here forever and ever, um, he's only worried about what's good for himself. And so initially, um, with that kind of an attitude, Jesus seems to be pretty dismissive. Um, you know, he just kind of is like, why do you call me good? You know, you trying to flatter me? You know, what, what, what is this attitude here? Um, and then he says, no one's good but God alone. Um, Possibly here, he's looking for some kind of statement of faith. You know, if this person believes that Jesus is the Son of God, maybe he would connect in that way. Um, but then he just, he's just, you know, good Jewish thoughts here. You know the commandments, and he lays them out. And so then the guy says, Teacher, all these I've observed from my youth. Okay, it's pretty good. And then Jesus looked at him. Maybe you've imagined that in your prayers sometime. Jesus looking at you. It says, and loved him. It kind of suggests that prior to this moment, Jesus hadn't really looked at him, hadn't really loved him. But there's this moment of encounter where Jesus moves beyond just sort of generic advice and gives this person something very, very personal and very loving. And he tells him to give away what he has. Um... Father Jim has a dog named Luca. Have any of you met Luca out of curiosity? Luca is a black lab, about a year old. Probably full size physically, but uh, not quite mentally. <laughs> All right. And uh, Luca loves playing with the ball too. Uh, Luca's favorite game is fetch. What Luca hasn't learned yet is you kind of got to let go of the ball so I can throw it, right? <laughs> Maybe you've had a dog like that. Uh, you're kind of like, okay, give me that, you know. <laughs> um, throwing is, is the best, dropping, not so much. And so, ironically, what this guy needs to do to save his life is to care about something other than himself. All right? He needs to be able to let go of that. It's kind of a small step. But he's, he started off on the wrong foot asking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He needs to be able to love something other than himself. And um, so we're already getting some good signs of this in, in that he's talking about honoring his father and mother and these, these commandments and things like that. But Jesus wants him to take um, his comfort, all these things that he's piled up, and to, to let that go. To worry about other people's comfort. In other words, instead of uh, the ball that he's chasing being his own self and what's good for me, um, he's showing a care and compassion for the community, for people that are around him. I remember as my grandmother was struggling in poor health, 
before she passed. She would say at times, why doesn't God just take me? You've heard people say something similar. And my mother would always say to her, uh, God doesn't take us as long as we have something to learn or something to teach. It's kind of one of those truisms. Um, You know, God doesn't take us as long as we have something to learn or something to teach. And sometimes we're not here only for ourselves. We're here for one another. I'm glad I had so many years with my grandmother to learn what she had to pass on. And I've got all kinds of wonderful stories about those experiences and the things that she taught me. And so this, this person here, his attitude may be, you know, how fast can I get to heaven? I just want to be out of here. You know, um, you know, I got no use at all for this place. There's nothing here for me. But it's not about him. It's not even just about him and God. It's him, it's God, and it's a community. And so now we come to this uh, image of the kingdom of God, okay? And the kingdom of God can mean a, a, a two different things. The kingdom of God can mean heaven. It can mean what comes next, you know, where, where we all hope to be. Um, but the kingdom can be right here. It's a community of people that care for each other. What a place we would, we would want to be in. Yes, it works because some of us give of our, of our resources, but we find, I think, richly rewarded in turn. Many people I've talked to in ministry over the years that have said they've certainly made sacrifices to be where they are. But the more they share with others, the more they give, the more richly rewarded they find themselves. Love has a way of breaking with economics seems to return uh, more than you give. The person who is loved feels better. The person who is loving often feels better as well. And so Jesus is able to offer this sort of surprising image about even the way things work down here. Uh, He says, uh, you know, Peter says, we've given up everything and followed you, right? They've uh, he, they, they left their family by the seashore, their boats, their nets, uh, whatever other relationships they may have had to physically follow Jesus all over the ancient Near East. But Jesus says, amen, I say to you, you know, there's no one who's given up house, brothers, sisters, and all these things who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. He's not here talking about heaven or eternal life or, or what comes next. He's talking about the kind of rich reward we can know now. But ironically, it can only happen if we let go. Much like Luca, who's always hanging on to those, uh, that precious possession that they have, that, that ball. But it's only when giving up that we are able to love in that selfless way that God loves and so know that rich reward. Now I'd invite you to stand and we'll offer our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now, mindful of this world's many needs, let's turn to our Heavenly Father in prayer. We pray for all followers of Christ throughout the world, that they may be inspired and united in faithfulness to his word and be living examples of his message of love and forgiveness for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, On this World Day for Migrants and Refugees, 
We pray for all those who are forced to flee from war, injustice, hunger, and poverty, that they may, be, they may travel safely and be received generously by those who are blessed with peace, prosperity, and a better life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in the Holy Land and in Ukraine, a peace that will end, with unjust, uh, end the unjust killing and destruction, a peace that will dispel all fear, hatred, a peace that will bring justice to all sides. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the three children being baptized today at 1130, that the great bright light of baptism will, chi will, will forever be, uh, lead their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else should we pray? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know our needs, you know our prayers, which we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song can be found in your hymnal number 790, the summons, 790 in your hymnal. brothers and sisters and siblings, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. And accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It's, right and just. it's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder. <clears throat> to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and fount of all holiness, and make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. But this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we might be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who've died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we might merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Now deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously granting peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign and prayer for peace. <laughs> Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Give me Jesus. 
can have all this world but give me Jesus. this mass, Dale Herberger, uh, by the Men's Club. Now let's stand and pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Newman Center is closed this Monday. Please note, the Cover Girls Book Club will not be meeting on Monday, October 14th, even though it was listed in the bulletin. The next meeting is November 18th. For anyone interested in reading at Masses, there will be a lecture training Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Trunk or Treat is this Saturday at 2.30 p.m. Cars distributing candy need to arrive by 2.15 p.m. Candy donations can still be left at the main office. The Newman Center will welcome the internationally acclaimed Vatican II scholar Massimo Fagioli on Tuesday, October 29th at 7 p.m. Professor Fagioli will speak on Pope Francis from Vatican II to Synodality, Promises and Challenges. All are welcome. For our students, there are daily masses for students at 8 a.m. on Wednesday mornings and at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday evenings. There is no Wednesday night dinner this week. Newman nights continue Thursday with a Bible reflection at 7 p.m. and a social hour at 8.30 p.m. Food for Thought will be packing bags on Monday night, so um, uh, at six o'clock, is that right, Mayor? Yep. 6 p.m. So anybody who's in Food for Thought, we're packing bags at six o'clock on Monday night. We're doing 75 bags this month, so we're up from 50 bags. So uh, everybody's contributions are so welcomed. We, they are, uh, these students are in need, and you are helping them a lot by your contributions. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our closing song can be found in your hymnal number 834. We are many parts. 834 in your hymnal. We are many parts. We are all one body. And the gifts we have, we are given to share.